The opinions expressed on this site and by Dr. Jen Levet are published for education and informational purposes only and are not intended as a diagnosis, treatment, or as a substitute for professional veterinary medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Is This a Thing? Veterinary Translations for Pet Owners. I'm your host, Dr. Jen the Vet. If you're a pet owner interested in learning more about vet med to better care for your pet and communicate with their vet, then click subscribe and don't miss an episode. You can also drop a comment or email me a question if you need something translated. Today's topic comes to us from Rebecca D in North Carolina. Hey Rebecca, thanks for sending me an email. She says, Dear Dr. Jen, I've had horses almost all my life and have wondered for years about colic. What causes it? How do we treat it? How can I prevent it in my horses? It seems random that some horses get it, some don't. Is it a virus? If one of my horses gets colic, will the others get it? Dr. Jen, is colic really a thing in horses? Okay, Rebecca. Well, let's talk about it because colic is a common question that owners, horse owners will come up with. And in fact, other animal owners will ask about colic also. So let's start basic. What is colic? Well, colic is actually a symptom, not a diagnosis, not a cause. It's just a symptom. It's a general term that means abdominal pain or discomfort. Okay, so if I say a horse has colic, that means the horse has a belly ache. That's basically what it means. Early signs of colic or abdominal discomfort in a horse could be lethargy, inappetence, or anorexia. They just don't want to eat. Or they could even do something as subtle as kind of zone out. And you know what that looks like, right? If you've ever had a really bad belly ache, but you were stuck at work or stuck at school and you couldn't really do anything about it right then, you know sometimes when that pain moves across your belly, you just kind of zone out and wait for it to pass. Yes. And sometimes that's what horses will do. They'll just kind of zone out. More severe signs like increased anxiety can happen. They can actually, horses will turn to look at their belly, try to look at their side like, why are you hurting? What's going on back there? That's called flank watching. Um, they may kind of posture like they're going to urinate or pee, but they don't. But they're posturing that way because maybe it makes their belly feel better. They sometimes will paw at the ground and then as things escalate and the pain becomes really much more severe, then they may paw like, you know, with their hoof, paw at the ground more often, consistently, harder. Um, they may lay down, they may get up, they may roll around. Now, when I was growing up and we would drive past a pasture and a horse would be rolling on the ground, I would think to myself, oh my gosh, that horse must be colicking. This is not true, friends. <laughs> horse owners are laughing right now because not every horse that's ro that rolls is colicking. But a horse that is rolling and then standing up and then rolling again and thrashing on the ground, that horse may be suffering from some abdominal discomfort or colic. So colic is more common in horses two to 10 years old. So not the really old ones and not the really young ones, but age two to 10. So it is something that all horses can get, as Rebecca asked, but it's more common in those that are two to 10. Differentials for it, like what else could cause your horse to look as though they have abdominal discomfort? Well, they could be tying up, um, which is a muscular disorder that can happen if you run a horse really hard and then stuff them in a stall. They could have laminitis, which is significant pain that kind of um, comes from changes in their hooves and their feet. Um, they could have pneumonia, or they could have dystocia, which is a fancy word for trouble giving birth. 
any of these can cause those other those clinical signs that we talked about the pawing the anxiety the staring at their flank that sort of thing but colic is a lot of times what we think is is happening so if you think your horse has colic when do you call the vet what can you do while you're waiting for the vet to arrive well there are some things you can do to try to help your horse be more comfortable um, there's one thing that a lot of people in barns will tell you and I thought was true um, before I went to vet school which is that you should walk a horse is colicking you should constantly walk them that's not exactly true it's an old myth but if the horse is rolling and thrashing and so anxious and and uncomfortable that they might hurt themselves then you can distract them by walking them but walk them you know just at a good steady pace they don't need to walk fast just walk because it keeps them from rolling and maybe hurting themselves um, if your horse is standing quietly and not having that much anxiety about it but you know that they're uncomfortable let them be call the vet and wait and watch because they're not hurting themselves and so you just need to let them remain calm um, one thing you can do is that if your horse is one that's prone to get a lot of gas um, intestinal gas flatulence um, what you can do is you can lunge them for about 15 minutes or so and that truthfully jiggles the intestines around and it can help them if it's just kind of a, a bunch of gas that's built up in their gut uh, jiggling those guts can help and that's actually one thing that that we know helps we say sometimes if you just put the horse in the trailer and take him to the vet sometimes they'll get out of that trailer like a new horse <laughs> because Riding in the trailer sometimes will provide the same sort of jiggle to the intestinal tract and relieve that gas that may be trapped there. Um, when you call the veterinarian, they may ask you some questions. So you're gonna to wanna to be prepared. Do they have a fever or do they not? A normal rectal temperature for a horse is anywhere from 97 to 101. So if they have anything over 101, you're gonna to wanna to make note of that and let the vet know when you call. Is their heart rate increased? Yep. You need to know how to take your horse's heart rate. So normal is actually 32 to 40 beats per minute. So what you do is you can find their heart rate either underneath their jaw. Sometimes you can find it um, down by their hooves, but um, on the back of the pastern, but that can be a little bit tricky. Um, I like to find it right where the artery crosses over their jawbone here. And don't smash it too hard, just feel for it so you can feel the pump. Uh, and then count, have somebody clock 15 seconds. You count how many beats. When they say stop, multiply it by four. That's how many beats per minute. If it's greater than 64, that means they're in pain. And so you need to be ready to tell your veterinarian when you call them. Additionally, um, what is their gum color? Uh, it should be pink, not purple. They should be nice and slick. They shouldn't be sticky. Um, if you press on them with your finger and kind of blanch the color out, then look and see how long it takes for the color to return. That's called a capillary refill time or CRT. And if it takes less than two seconds, that's normal. If it takes longer, you've got a problem. You don't want to give them any butte, okay, or banamine unless the veterinarian directs you to. So don't give any of those meds to a horse you, you think may be colicking unless the veterinarian recommends that when you call. And so then you have to wonder what's causing this? Okay, we know it's abdominal discomfort. So there's a whole lot of things that can cause that just like in other species, including people. So there's a number of factors associated with increased risk of colic, including if they have parasites, if they have worms, any gastrointestinal parasites. Um, sometimes if you feed them certain things like really sweet sugary feed, um, if they've had a recent change in their feeding habits, if you were feeding them, you know, um, once a day, now you're feeding them three times a day, any big change like that if they used to be in a pasture and now they're stabled um, 
if they don't have access to pasture, if they don't have access to water all day long, uh, if you radically increase their exercise regimen, sometimes if you um, transport them long distances and they're not used to it, all of that can cause it, right? Another thing is that an impaction or a blockage in their GI tract will cause this. And uh, most commonly we'll see sand. So if they are in a sandy pasture and there's not that much grass, sometimes the horse will take in too much sand and it'll sit in their gut. And that will cause an impaction, slow the gut down, stop, and that's really painful for the horse. If your horse is overweight, then they're more likely to colic. So keep the weight off your horse for a number of reasons, but avoiding colic is one. And then, like I said, the parasites can really be an issue. So you wanna make sure that you're routinely deworming your horse under the direction of your veterinarian. The things we worry about causing colic are the small strongyles and tapeworms, okay, as far as parasites go. So how are we gonna treat it? Well, it depends on what's causing it, right? First, we try a medical approach. Um, and then we might have to move to surgery. So medical things we can do to treat colic include aggressive intravenous fluids. The vet may come out and just place a catheter, a jugular catheter typically in your horse and run them liters of IV fluids. They wanna super hydrate them because sometimes that will help the gut get rolling. Uh, we'll give them pain medication. Sometimes when horses get really anxious, it can exacerbate any sort of uh, motility issues they're having in their gut, just like any creature. If that doesn't work, I mean, sometimes we'll pass, they'll pass a nasogastric tube, see if they get fluid back, that sort of thing. That's one thing your vet might do when they first get out there. They might put mineral oil down a nasogastric tube, which goes up the nose and down the throat into the stomach. Um, if none of these things are effective, or if they truly suspect like an impaction, then they're gonna recommend surgery. And as many horse owners know, abdominal surgery in a horse is a big deal. Um, so if the bowel is necrotic or dead because they've been colicking for a long, prolonged period of time, or if there's a large impaction that is cutting off blood supply or a torsion of the, the intestines, like where it's twisted, then, then they're gonna need surgery to repair that. Okay, so we don't wanna have to deal with that. So what are we gonna do to prevent colic in a horse? Well. Overfeeding grain, that's not a good plan. So if you feed too much pelleted feed to your horse, then you're gonna set them up for a colic. And they can colic repeatedly with that, right? It has to do with the bacteria and the uh, carbohydrates in the grain and the gas that they produce. So the best strategy for minimizing colic is to offer free choice grass hay to your horse, however much they want, so that they can just graze whenever they want to. Um, they don't have to eat all at one time as fast as they can. They can just munch on hay all day long. You can feed them grain, but you want to feed them as little grain as they need, okay? And then if you have to increase it or change the amount of grain, you wanna do that slowly over time. And then you wanna turn them out when you're feeding them grain. Don't keep them in the stable. If you can turn them out into a pasture or exercise them once a day, that helps keep the gut moving, not let the gas build up. Okay, when possible, um, you want to pasture them in non-irrigated fields or use a grazing muzzle to control their weight so that they don't take in, like if they're on an alfalfa pasture or if it's a really lush pasture, you don't want to have them go eat a ton of that grass either. You want to feed at least 60% of their daily intake as hay. So only 40% or less should be pelleted feed, okay? Um, you wanna uh, substitute high fat feeds and high fiber feed for grain supplements. If you need calories, fat and high fiber is better. Uh, provide feeding systems so that they don't have to accidentally take in a bunch of sand or dirt when they're, when they're grazing. Uh, because again, the sand can cause the sand impaction. Lots and lots of exercise. So you're hearing a theme, right? Limit the grain, increase the forage or hay that they take in and let them have a pasture, let them walk around. Exercise is good, helps the, ge helps the gut keep going. Um, you wanna give them clean and uh, drinking water as much as they want. They should have access to that all day long and all night long, and don't put ice in it. That's not helpful if you're trying to avoid colic. 
Um, you want to have a good preventive care program where you're routinely making sure they don't have parasites that build up. Um, you want to make sure they don't have a stressful life. Oh my goodness. I think I need that. <laughs> I need that component. I don't want to have as any stress I don't need. Neither does your horse. It can lead to gastrointestinal upset. Okay. So make sure things are stable for them. Uh, that's a horse pun. Make sure your horse has a stable environment and a stable routine so that, that you can avoid things like um, sand impaction, uh, excess gas in the um, intestine, um, and other things that can lead to colic or abdominal discomfort. Okay, well, Rebecca, thanks so much for asking us about horses. We love to talk about large animal here on Dr. Jen the Vet. And uh, that will do it for this episode. So I'm Dr. Jen the Vet. Thank you for watching. Is this a thing? Veterinary translations for pet owners. Remember, if you're a pet owner who's interested in learning more about vet med to better care for your pet or communicate with their vet, then click subscribe. And remember, no YouTube video is a substitute for a visit to the vet. I'll see you on the next episode. The opinions expressed on the site and by Dr. Jen the Vet are published for education and informational purposes only and are not intended as a diagnosis, treatment, or as a substitute for professional veterinary medical advice, diagnosis, and treatment.